It is 6.25 in the morning, and we are here at Kwan Lai Shun having breakfast. It's been three years since I've had Taiwanese breakfast in Taiwan. And I honestly, I'm not a massive breakfast person in general, but I will get up for this any day of the week. This is my the thing about breakfast is that it's supposed to be affordable, it's supposed to be fast, and it's supposed to be comforting. It doesn't have to be the most gourmand thing in the world, right? But it provides a level of comfort for people on the go. When you're looking at the line, the takeaway line was way longer than the dine-in line, right? And the takeaway line was moving so much faster. So that's where the business is. And so I think the food really reflects those three actionable items. It's fast. I got all my food within 45 seconds. It's affordable. The, I over-ordered. I ordered enough for four people. It was five bucks, 150 NT. Most people probably spend 50 NT at most. So yeah, it checks all those boxes. We have the turnip cake. And when there's an option to add eggs, you always add eggs because it's just extra flavor and extra texture. This is savory soy milk, which is a constant in my life. Looks kind of different. I'm, uh, I'm pretty intrigued. It, it coagulates in a different manner than the, the soy milk we get stateside. It's a lot thicker. This is a tambing. So tambing is essentially like a thin tortilla flour-based, and then they add a little bit of scallions to it, and then there's an egg cracked in. I've also never had it like this. I've never had a yotel inside a dambin. Normally, I get the yotel with the saobing, which is sort of like a tandoori bread, or a Taiwanese croissant, if you will. It's got nice, thin layers inside. They got an auntie frying all the yotel in the back. Impeccable skill. I've always wondered how they stay crispy. Because they're still a crisp. Even though it's been like steamed inside of this, this egg and flour concoction. It's like a burrito. But this, this is what I grew up eating. This is my dad's favorite, so he'd always order this for me as a kid. So, xiaobing. It's basically sort of like a puff pastry, but Taiwanese style. Lard is used as kind of a leavener between sheets of dough. It presses together and at the high temperature, it puffs up, creating the layers. Same technique as croissants, just lard instead of butter. The breakfast boss lady, man, she's like, I think she's under the disguise of an old grandma. When somebody's an old grandma, the automatic thing you assume is they're super nice, crazy hospitable, but you can just tell She's a sharp entrepreneur. This is a shop, because I saw there were two shops. Yes, this is a shop. This shop was in 1988. When did you open it? The first shop opened in 1988. How did you open it? Because I wanted to live. I wanted to make money. So I thought I'd make money. The kind of entrepreneurial spirit in the 1980s Taiwan, that's just... It's kind of unmatched. It's, it's almost like Silicon Valley today. Everybody wanted to be somebody because everybody had money, right? And that was just kind of the environment. Yeah, 我自己以前的關係我打從我像小學的時候我吃的東西都喜歡吃外省口味我喜歡吃那個道地的四川菜山東大餅什麼的我吃到那種東西我都喜歡加辣椒醬油醋這是酸酸辣辣那你自己本身
我们那个时候很穷啊，都嘛吃稀饭，都是稀饭，都啊做煮的水水的腌萝卜啊。你做工的人都喜欢吃饭啊，这些面粉的其实都是那些外省人带过来，来过了，因为他们以前当兵都有军中都有发那个的面粉，嗯嗯，啊面粉他们就自己会做面条啦，做水饺，做什么面都是自己和，嗯哼，做馒头什么，其实这种东西都是他们外省人以前他们在吃的，他们那外省人不吃饭。对啊，因为其实每一样东西的起源点都有点不一样。萝卜糕，我这个算是我们台湾的，就是因为怎样？因为我们早期我们台湾人都会过年过节都会蒸萝卜糕。嗯。你说那个广东的那个是他们都有换腊肉啦，换什么？这是港式的。对对对对对。对对，我们这个不是港式，我们这是台式的。对。The breakfast menu is a mash of of what locals in Taiwan were eating. As well as the Chinese influences brought in by the soldiers who came to Taiwan after the Chinese Civil War.